Welcome PCS members and friends to our PCS IBS seminar today. Uh, today we have a pleasure of hosting Professor Tsuyoshi Okubo from University of Tokyo in Japan. And uh, this seminar is a part of uh, activities of advanced study group uh, that goes by the name of Tensor Network Approaches to Many Body Systems. And its convener is uh, Professor Hyun Yong Lee from Korea University Sejong. And I would ask Professor Lee to introduce our speaker. Yeah, thank you. So, hello, uh, I am Hyun Yong Lee from Korean University, the convener of the ongoing ASG regarding the tensor network approaches to uh, many body systems. Uh, today, uh, I am i uh, very delighted to have the opportunity to uh, reach uh, our seminar, especially given by Professor Chiyoshi Kuo with uh, this official seminar. So uh, before we begin, uh, I would like to uh, give a very brief introduction to the speaker's uh, background. So Professor Chiyoshi Kuo got the bachelor degree in 2003 and got a degree in 2000. 2008 from Kyushu University, and then he started his uh, lecture, uh, research uh, career from the Osaka University in 2008, and then he moved to the University of Tokyo, especially the Institute for Solid State Physics uh, 2012, and then he moved to the University of Tokyo uh, Department of Physics 2007. Uh, as a project researcher, uh, so project lecturer, and then finally he uh, started his uh, professor tutorial from 2021 from, uh, in the University of Tokyo. So let's welcome the professor. Thank you. So thank you very much for my introduction. Ah, okay. So first of all. I, I'd like to thank Union for giving me this uh, opportunity to talk about our recent work that uh, combined uh, our tensor network idea to the quantum algorithm in this uh, official BCS seminar. Okay, so I'm Tsuyoshi Oko from the University of Tokyo. So, honestly speaking, uh, this work has not been completed yet, actually, but uh, I chose this topic because uh, this idea, this uh, quantum classical entanglement approach is highly inspired by the previous collaboration with the CPP and both of us, just say, and the professor. So yeah, here today, I, I'd like to show you uh, one approach uh, that we try to use the near future quantum the quantum risk to solve the uh, quantum memory system, in the, basically the terminal. Then uh, this is the today's contents. First, I'd like to briefly introduce to you the problems in the quantum medical problem and the relationship to the quantum computer. And also, I think that some of you are not familiar with the Tesla network. So I just briefly show you the Tesla network representation of the quantum state. Then I'd like to propose you the, what is the quantum classical network approach that connect the Tesla network representation in the quantum basically the quantum circuit. Then the, to test the, this idea, I showed you the one example to application to the gapless type spin liquid state. And in this case, the, we can we have the very good uh, tensor network representation of the gapless type spin liquid state. And based on this state, we can apply the, this idea quantum classical entanglement approach. And I show you that the V we may, uh, how say, calculate the physical quantity in the thermodynamic limit by using the small cluster calculated by the disk. Okay. Then the, this is the, how say, background. So yeah, we are interested in, uh, at least I, I am interested in the quantum medical problems. And that uh, is the 
uh, origin of the variety with phenomena, like a chemical reaction, superconductivity, topological state, or something like that. Then the if, uh, basically speaking, the if we consider time independent situation, the Schrodinger equation is nothing but the eigenvalue problem of the huge matrix like this. And because the, we consider the many particles to ex, uh, explain the this phenomena, the dimension of this matrix H, matrix representation of the Hamiltonian, becomes exponentially large. And so we cannot solve this uh, eigenvalue problem by numerics, usually. And that is the problem in the quantum medical problem. Okay, so we need a huge memory and also the huge computation also. Then, uh, naively, we can imagine that if we can have the quantum computer with error correction, it is called a fault tolerant quantum computer, it may solve this kind of the quantum many body problems more he efficiently than the classical computer because the quantum computer itself contains the I'll say, realization of the quantum dynamics. Then the, there are several proposals. But the, probably the most fundamental algorithm to apply the quantum computer, for the trial quantum computer to the main quantum physical program is so-called the quantum phase estimation. So in this case, we input our approximate ground state to the quantum computer, and we apply the, some uh, unitary dynamics and also the quantum Fourier transformation. And after that, I'll, after the measurement, we obtain the eigenvalue corresponding to the ground state, for example, and also that we obtain the exact ground state as a other. That is the, are called the quantum phase estimation technique. And basically, the, once we repair the good ground state, then the computation time of this uh, quantum phase estimation scale as the polynomial of the number of qubits or number of spins, if we most of the quantum space system. And a forward given accuracy. So the compared with the previous exponential scaling, this uh, quantum phase estimation scales polynomial. So we naively feel that uh, this quantum phase estimation uh, outperforms the classical computation. Uh, okay. Where does the Hamiltonian uh, uh, Ah, okay. So the, this initially dynamics is nothing but the uh, Hamiltonian time evolution. And uh, it, it is somehow related to uh, yeah, some time in the uh, interval. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have a question. If, if you have any question, please leave it down to me. Okay, then the actually recently we uh, estimate the some crossover between the computation time in the classical computer based on the tensor network, uh, namely the DMRG, and uh, this uh, uh, quantum phase estimation algorithm. And uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, not the today topic, so I just briefly show the only the result. But we uh, estimate the runtime to obtain the ground state energy with uh, this one, uh, sorry, ground state, not the ground state energy, to obtain the ground state with error, ground state energy error like this. Then the, we estimate the execute uh, computation running time, run time of the quantum phase estimation like this, like uh, polynomial scaling. And uh, this green part corresponds to the tensor network calculation, actual calculation, or the 10 by 10, uh, sorry, high level model, and also the Fermi Hubbard model. And what we found is that the crossover of the runtime between the classical calculation and uh, uh, quantum phase estimation appears at a relatively small system size, like 10 by 10. And the time scale is also uh, shorter, uh, uh, so like less than uh, 10,000. So, yeah, uh, in, in, if the, this estimation is correct, we can say that if we can have the whole trial quantum computer, then the condensed matter physics, uh, sorry, I didn't explain it yet, but the Heisenberg model or Fermi Hubbard model is the uh, uh, fundamental model in the condensed matter physics. And the, this kind of the condensed matter physics is a good application of the quantum computer. Actually, the, if we 
count the necessary computation time and also the necessary uh, number of qubits to obtain the quantum classical crossover, we can draw the, this kind of schematic view. So the if we want to solve the factoring problem in the quantum computer, then we need a very huge number of qubits and we need very huge, uh, very long runtime to overcome how to perform the classical computer. But if we consider the condensed matter physics problem, we can estimate that the runtime at the crossover point is uh, about one hour. And the necessary number of qubits is about uh, 10 to the fifth. Okay. Then the Based on this estimate, we believe that the condensed matter problem is the next target of the, our quantum computer application uh, next to the, this random study. That is as well. So, why do you think the quantum chemistry is more difficult than the <laughs> Yeah, that's a good problem. point. Here, we assume that in the case of the condensed matter problem, we have the translation and and uh, in the implementation of the, this uh, quantum phase estimation, and usually we use the so-called uh, qubitization or some sort of technique. And uh, the trans existence of the translation or invariant hugely decreases the necessary number of the uh, house quantum gates. And so that causes uh, some one order difference. Okay. How do you estimate the quantum computer runtime? Okay, so because in this collaboration, there is some expert on the quantum information. And actually, the, uh, Dr. Suzuki uh, simulates the house <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, and quantum computer uh, say calculation. So, how to arrange the gate in the logical, uh, how say logical gate or something like that by his own code, and they, they optimize the arrangement of the how say, physical qubit or something like that. And so, yeah, actually, they by assuming the some error rate and the uh, long frequency or something like that, then we obtain that this scale and that is runtime in the real, let's say, time rate. So, and like my second question is that yeah. so if, eventually, I think DMRG is actually exponential. Ah, right, right. Long here. Uh, but if I use PEPs, mm -hmm. can I expect the curve to be having lower slopes so ah, okay. eventually I don't have a crossover? Okay, it's a very good question. So yeah, I I, I expect something like that before this calculation. Uh -huh. But here the point is that the crossover appears with a very small system size. And the slope itself uh, uh, is at most same with this quantum phase estimation because this is basically the n square. Uh -huh. Then the, if the PEPS calculation is uh, need a longer computation time after this smaller system time, uh -huh. then we cannot overcome the, this quantum phase estimation. Maybe it cannot even have slower so uh, can I, have lower. I, I think that this n square is uh, basically the yes. performance for the calculation. So just to make sure the simulation is um is conducted on the simulator, not a real uh, ah yeah, yes. uh, right, right. So but, but, but 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 we we consider the whole trial on the computer and we also assume that that some sort of the error rate. So, uh, so there's uh, also some noise function. <laughs> No, not noise function, but uh, we just assume the error rate. And depending on the error rate, we need uh, some error correction. Error correction, and we can estimate the error correction time. It's very similar to the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Question? OK. Uh, in this estimation, you already use translational equivalent. Uh, do, you, do you mean that? Like this 10 by 10 is a Already assumed in the video. Yes, uh, so in this quantum phase estimation. Okay. Yes, so we, we have the same interaction on each. Okay. That's a very important point to reduce the computation in the quantum phase estimation. I, I can tell you. In the case of what is it? J1, 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 J
the J1 DX model, so it is beyond the boundary. The post computation for the more input. Ah, sorry, what what kind of to simulate the phase boundary or oh, right. the kid phase. So, in this specific graph, we put the J2 is, is equal to 0.5 times J1, but so it uh, is believed to be the speed we could see. And so, the, this is the most difficult case. But the, pro, uh, the point is that in the case of the quantum computer calculation, the parameter of the J2 is, uh, how to say, the property of the ground state is not so important. So just the number of interaction is the one to calculate the runtime. And so the, this situation is uh, difficult for the classical calculation, but uh, it, this is not so difficult to the quantum computer. But basically, how simulate the dimensions of evolution? No, this is the quantum phase estimation. So this is the, just a real time stream. And if you have the expectation of something that from 3D, you have more expectation. That's ah, it's related to the number of bogies in BRQ. So it's related to how, how many, I'll say, qubits do we need or something like that. So yeah, actually, yeah, that part is related to the prepa preparation of the ground state, approximate ground state. Okay, if the uh, ground state is somehow gapless, in that case, the, uh, to prepare the ground state, we may need the much computation. But uh, this part is not related to the gapless nature. So uh, if we can close it to the point of view, we can understand that the most quantum computer require uh, I think we don't need the lower cost. But yeah, if we can prepare this and grant it to be safe. <laughs> so, my question is can we uh, use the same cost no, compared to cost in compared to ground? Uh, probably it depends on the technique, but usually the preparation of the ground state is more difficult if the ground state is careless, honestly speaking. So, but here we neglect the such cost. Um, we have another question. So, I'm curious about the real life selections. Okay. So, in terms of estimation of the runtime, do you mean how many cores? Ah, okay, it's a very good question. So, actually, the, this DMR calculation is not uh, highly tuned. So, this is just a single node calculation. And uh, I just imposed uh, some. Uh, you want symmetry, for example, and I just use this uh, about 10 or something like that. But here I showed uh, some, I'll say, shaded region. It uh, showed uh, some 10 or 100. So we, we may speed up our calculation one order or two order, but it's still slower than the quantum computers. Okay, and about the accuracy, mm -hmm. so I, I know these two models. Don't have the set solution. Right, right. Say the okay. Only given one, but the sum is compared with the ground state and the two Okay. 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 It's a very good question. Actually, this is just an introduction, but yeah, I like to explain the detail. So, yeah, first, I we perform the DMR discrimination and we extrapolate the, our energy as a function of the truncation error, and we estimate uh, basically the ground state energy. And by comparing that energy, we uh, of calculate the, how to say, runtime versus the uh, error. And we show the, some scaling relation between the error versus runtime. And we extrapolate our data for these Actually, the, for example, two 10 by 10 cases, we cannot achieve this error in the real calculation, but we extrapolate our computation time of uh, okay. being, uh, assuming the such scaling relation. You mean for your functions? Uh, no, DMR is here. So this error is for the total energy. And so in this case, 10 by 10, we need the uh, 4.2. Uh, 
energy density error is 0.001 or something like that. And it is not so easy for the short time calculation. If, if you perform the long time calculation in the classical data, we may obtain the this one. Yeah, but here I just take that point. <laughs> sorry, I, I'm sorry, I know it's only an introduction slide, but I, it's like, I, I think it's still, I still want to argue that it's not a fair comparison to compare DMRG because you will get an exponential, oh, right, right, right. Right, right, this growth over here. But also in the other paper by like, Garden Chen's group yeah. that they argue whether there's an exponential quantum advantage, they yeah. basically, they show that by using test network techniques, the scaling or for fixed accuracy, tense network calculation is also linear in the system size. So it will also be at the same slope. So, for example, if I have a large enough classic computer, I can maybe be getting lower than ah, yeah, the yeah, quantum uh, computer line. Yeah, and yes. there's no crossover at all. Yeah, I, I, I agree, agree with it somehow. So, yeah, but the, probably the problem is our finding is that the crossover appears the very small system time. Okay. Uh, I agree with you that uh, if the crossover appears at the very large system time, we can I'll say, use the many cores or something like that. But if the system size is so small that we cannot uh, obtain a good parallelized efficiency or something like that, we need uh, somehow uh, long real time simulation. Is that the point? Uh, okay. so my point is that with fixed accuracy, both PEPS and quantum computer will have linear scaling yeah, in the I, system I size. Yeah, so okay. there's probably no cross. But I mean, if we look at, say, a fixed system size and look at the scaling of the accuracy, maybe there's a Quantum advantage somehow. Yeah. No, no, but, but maybe yeah. that's so yeah. right, yeah. we can talk about this. I, I, I directly yeah. emphasize that. I also think that there is no exponential quantum advantage. So I, I think the scaling is almost the same. So mm -hmm. the, if we can perform a good classical simulation, the slope is the same, almost the same. But the, the point is that uh, I would say, is the pre factor. <laughs> pre factor, yes. Yeah, actually, probably you know that the fifth computation is uh, type worship. Yes. Then the pre factor is uh, usually the smaller system called DMRs works well. Standard base. Yeah. Okay, that's the point. Anyway, the best thing is that uh, probably you may obtain the quantum uh, advantage in the quantum pedagogy problem if we can use the port of the quantum computer. But uh, if we realize uh, 20 or 30 years later, so we cannot use this one to solve the uh, present quantum minimum body problem. Okay, so we need to consider a different approach. That's the same topic. Okay, so as you know, maybe most of you know that uh, in the near future, <laughs> Can use the so called NISC intermediate, uh, noisy intermediate scale quantum computer. And uh, it contains a variety of noise, and we cannot collect the such uh, noise uh, in the time uh, along the say, operating the quantum computer. And in that situation, we can uh, not use the previous quantum phase estimation, and so we, we can need to consider a different approach. The one famous approach is so called the variation of quantum eigen solver, probably. Then it is nothing but the variation approach in the quantum main body program, so that the we approximate our quantum state by the quantum circuit. And we just optimize the circuit parameter by using the quantum computer and the classical computer. The quantum computer is used to calculate the energy or its derivative. And by using such information, we just calculate the how to change our parameter of the sun. That is called uh, variation of quantum, I guess, of an EQE. But uh, after proposal of this EQE, the people realized that the, actually that this EQE is not so powerful. So because to Calculate the energies or derivatives, we may need the many uh, measurements, for example, about medium or something else, <laughs> or one step. So it is very difficult to perform in the realist quantum computer. It may need the many long runtime. Then, 
So we need to uh, outperform the classical computer calculation, maybe slowly by uh, yes, degree. So yeah, we uh, want to combine the classical computer and the disk. <coughs> and there are several proposals, but the here I, I'd like to uh, propose to give the Tensor network based approach like this. So, uh, before explaining uh, this approach, I, I'd like to uh, uh, emphasize some difficulty in the beginning, our uh, issues in the beginning. So, the, because we represent our quantum state by the quantum circuit, but we need to consider that can we, uh, can a uh, quantum circuit be a good variation of wave function? So, actually, the exact representation is impossible because we need the expansion number of the quantum circuit. So the issue is how can we construct a better approximation in the quantum circuit? And the second issue is that the can we give type algorithm out of the classical computers? As uh, many of you know that the test network approach is very really powerful. So it is the hardly to believe that the risk can outperform the test network computation. Yeah, this, this is my also I feel so that. But probably by combining the tensor network and NISC, we may outperform the present classical computer. So that is my proposal. Then the, we consider this kind of the approach. First, we assume that we have the good representation of the ground target quantum state and the tensor network. Then we embed such tensor network state in the quantum side. And we use such representation in the NISC, oh, sorry. And, uh, and the, by using this setup, we may outperform the classical calculation because the, at least this new with a trial with function contains uh, more information than the previous classical calculation. That's my idea. And, uh, Today, I show you that this um, approach can maybe be applicable to the case of the time state. So. <laughs> oh, you can take more time oh, okay, since, since there were discussions. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let, let me quickly explain what is the test time network quantum state. Okay. I, I believe most of you know what, what it is. So the test time network quantum state is something like the to try is uh, to Perform, try to perform the data compression in the quantum many body problems. So, as I explained, the total vector space, human space dimension is exponentially large in the case of the quantum many body problems. But we know that if we, we are interested in the only the low energy physics and there is a smaller quantum, uh, quantum correlation than the general quantum state, we then picked up the randomly picked up the, our vector space. That is called the area of the entanglement entity. And by using this not prior knowledge of, of that is the uh, entanglement entity area law, we can construct a good variation on that. And the family of such uh, variation on that is called the uh, tensor network, a uh, quantum state. And uh, this tensor network stage is something like that. So we have the tensor network, uh, sorry, quantum memory state. And if we, once we fix the basis, it can be considered as uh, some many like tensor like this. And by using the information of the entanglement structure, quantum entanglement structure, we may approximately decompose this huge tensor into the network of the small tensors. And that is nothing but the tensor network decomposition of the quantum input state. And usually in the case of the condensed matter physics, we know we have the translational invariance or a chocolate interaction. And in that case, we may use the heads or matrix product states to represent the, our own manual system. And if we can approximate, efficiently approximate our quantum state by using this kind of tensor network, then we can expect that the necessary number of independent elements to represent our quantum state is reduced from the exponential scaling to the polynomial. In this depth case, it is just linear of the number of sides. And the original representation needs a physical 
for example, in the case of the S equal one of the system. So we may expect the exponential speed of the sample. And today we consider a specific tensor network state named uh, tensor product state or HEPS. And uh, here we today we consider two dimensional lattice. So it is like this. So we have yeah, this tensor network. And uh, the yeah, technical term uh, here I should introduce to you is uh, this bond dimension D. So if we pick up the one local tensor, uh, this, in this square at respect, we have the five legs and one vertical leg corresponds to the physical degrees like spin up and down. And the other four corresponds to the virtual legs and it uh, determines the how say, accuracy of the our variational wave function. And it, the size of this index is called the border dimension. And this, if we can take the D to the infinity limit, it becomes it. Okay. And uh, because we can easily check that this TPS can satisfy the previous entanglement area law, then it uh, indicates that we may increase the system size without increase the model dimension D, and we can easily take the infinite type limit by fixing the model dimension D. It is the power of network representation, and actually we can directly simulate the infinite type system how dynamic limit by using the so-called I heps or ITPS or IDM or something like that. Okay, this is just a brief introduction to the tensor network. So today I'd like to combine this tensor network bottom state to the previous uh, uh, PGV type algorithm. Okay, so this is the summary of my proposal. So I named this approach as the quantum classical entangler approach because the previously VGE is called uh, called a uh, quantum classical hybrid algorithm. But here I more aggressively combine the classical computer and the quantum computer. And so I think this is entangled approach. So the, the idea is something like that. So we assume that the, we obtain, we have already have the very good tensor network representation of the target ground state. So it very good means that qualitatively this state can be, uh, uh, this tensor network state is the uh, same with the uh, true ground state. So in other words, the low range correlation will be represented by the classical tensor network state. Then, but in some cases, quantitatively this tensor network state is good, sufficiently good, but uh, for example, energy expectation value is not sufficient to draw the phase diagram, for example. In that case, we may use the quantum computer to increase the energy accuracy. Then the method is something like that. So we uh, uh, represent this tensor network state in the quantum circuit. Then to increase the representation power of this uh, variation of wave function, we just add the additional quantum circuit to the like this. Then originally we have basically the very huge tensor network state. Uh, it can be infinite. But in the NISC, we can only treat the small system type. We have the problem, but my idea is something like that. If the, this tensor network state represents a true long range correlation sufficiently, then the optimization within the small cluster is uh, good. Even if we uh, uh, so the, even if we cannot treat the infinite size system. So the point is that we add the gate, but we fix this tensor network backbone. So we just optimize that this additional. I'm sorry, I, I did a bit confused. Okay. Which part of this diagram is uh, actually realized by the quantum device? And which part is uh, realized by the classical computer? Okay, so this uh, classical tensor network is uh, calculated by classical computer. And within this square, <laughs> Uh, we perform the calculation value for Oh, yeah. okay. everything in the, in yes. the square. Yes. yes. So this is assuming that encoding the tensor the, network causes zero. Ah, yes. Uh, yes. So we yeah, are we assume that we can easily 
M code or embed the this definite to access the protocol. Actually, we have one example. So the number of specificities that in this case. So that probably you know that the screen make it state in very difficult to say that uh confirmative program, but in the case of the gapless specs, we make it state. Fortunately, we have the good implementation. And the after that, here we are showing that we treat the translational invariant system. So we can copy this optimal gain uh, using the translational invariance. Then we can at, at, at least virtually construct the infinite state system by that type. And we evaluate it by using again the classical computer. But the, here, the, our target is just not the optimization, but the, we just want to calculate the expectation value from the, this infinite size system uh, data network. In that case, we may use, the, for example, multiple sampling, randomized algorithm, uh, because we can accept the, some sort of the statistical error in, in uh, the evaluation of the physical model. Actually, if we can use a multi power sampling, we can largely reduce the computation work in, in the how say tensor network allocation. Usually, the statistical noise affects the uh, let's say convergence of the optimization in the classical uh, tensor network allocation. And usually, it is not so easy to use a multi power sampling at the stage of the optimization. But here, we use the <laughs> Quantum device of we optimize the, our tensor network. And also, this system, system is not so large. So we believe that we can apply the good algorithm in this system. OK, this is the outline of my approach. OK. But this red box can be shown as a classical computer, right? In some cases, yes. Actually, the, nowadays, it is difficult to uh, perform the, this part in the real device. But in the near future, we may use the uh, uh, many qubit with less error rate. And in, the, in that case, this part can outperform the classical computer, like uh, in that diagonalization one. So if we have, the, for example, 2,800 qubit, then the, we cannot perform, uh, and the error rate is very small, we cannot perform this part in the classical computer. So with uh, this uh, case, are they like the variation in optimized or? Yes, yes. Okay. So we may use the VQE for them. Okay. This is okay. Please. So the reason that you need to start from a process from this network state is to give a good initial state. Yes, that's right. And also, the, we believe that the Tesla network state is a, a relatively easy compact uh, transform to the quantum state. Right. The reason you need a good initial state mm -hmm. is it so this is my recommendation. Is it because you cannot apply too many gates to the computer? Ah, right, right. Uh, one, one reason is something like that. So the if the initial state is not so good, we, we need a very uh, right. huge number of the gates okay. to represent the quantum state. So, so and another reason is that, that this part. So the, here we use a small cluster, but our target is the, for example, infinite size system. So if we highly optimize uh, this uh, small cluster system, then the pro probably the I'll say gate gate uh, is optimized specifically for the small system type. But if we contain the long range interaction in this part, we believe that the uh, optimization in the smaller system size is may maybe extrapolate or imported to the optimization in the infinite style system. That is my idea, OK, please. So I have a question. Uh, <laughs> so part. Uh -huh. So from the hundred, sometimes the, the two side gate is not the most time consuming part for the item simulation. It's the corner central metric part that need up all the speed in time. So how the <laughs> okay? So you, you mentioned about this part. This one? Okay. okay. So but in the quantum computer, we can easily apply the long range okay, to to keep it. Yeah. But so here you are only considered that the QCTFS is only a local tensor network, right? Uh, QC, yes, this part is local or some sort of the PEPs or 
in pain. But here we can consider the long range gate or yeah, this gate not necessarily the accident to give it. Gate. Or in general, we can consider the very long range gate. But so for I pads, the time comes in your part is the longer transfer length. Yeah, right, right. Then how does this approach? Okay, so the here the we if we add the this gate, the modern dimension of the tensor entropy increases. And as you know, the uh, the scaling of the corner transfer matrix normalization is uh, about d to the eight or nine to the ten, so it's very huge. And so the we can obtain the how say some kind of the polynomial speed up. Which is very kind of okay. Transfer is that. Yes, right, right, right. Estimate. Yes. Estimate the energy. Okay, that, that's the point. Oh. So here we assume that we can use uh, yeah, okay. sampling. So the compared with the optimization, we can reduce the complexity at the last stage because we can accept the some sort of the statistical error. And we can use the simulation. Yeah, right, right. Right, you cannot really do the thing. Nice. Okay, but we can treat the very large system. Then. If we, for example, we can apply the probably professor doesn't really talk about the, this technique, but we can apply the test and network visualization group to the finite size system. So, in that case, we can uh, radically increase the system height by uh, factor two or something. Like that. It is also, I guess, yeah, probably. Uh, honestly speaking, I didn't check the, this part. But today I show you the example for this one. This part. Okay. Okay. Then I will skip the details. So yeah, probably that this uh, idea is uh, good. Okay. So I will skip the details and I I, I want to show you that one example to apply to this idea. Okay. Then the target is so called a gapless space liquid state, and it is uh, uh actually actually the this quantum classical entangled approach is inspired by this example. So the, I invented the, this idea from this uh, study. Okay. Then the today, uh, uh, so sorry, the target is the Hanikam lattice type model. So in this model, we call the basic or half speed model on the Hanikam two dimensional Hanikam lattice, and we have the anisotropic interaction like. The e, x, y bond, and on z bond, we have the SGS interaction, and on x bond, we have the SXX interaction. <laughs> and the, uh, this model is reductively solvable by introducing a viral fermion as that this morning talk. Uh, and the point is that the, its ground state is so called a quantum spin liquid state, it is the highly entangled state, not only a highly entangled state. Then the the key here first I'd like to show you that uh, we can qualitatively uh, we can have the qualitatively better expression of this gapless type in the case state by using the tensor network. To understand the uh, such uh, representation, first I'd like to introduce the conserved quantity in the type model. So that is called the flux operator, like this. For each bracket. We consider the six body of beta consists of the output matrices like this. And for depending on the position, we apply the different power matrices like this. And because this operator is the, the product of power matrices, we can easily confirm that the eigenvalue is equal to one or minus one. And also we can easily check that the it commute with the original habit. And uh, also, it also commit with each other. Then the, this flux operator is the, somehow the conserved quantity of the hour. And it is known that the ground state, the spin liquid state, is in the sector of flux one for all hexagon. So for all hexagon, if we measure the distance will be that it is it's, it's eigen state of corresponding to the idea by one. Okay, it is called the vortex-free state. 
Then so, because of this property, we want to project, we want to consider the projector onto this vortex free sector so that we can pick up the uh, say, important sector from the, our human space. Then the, uh, let, let's consider the projector onto the single market. And in that case, uh, we can really construct the projector like this. So because the eigenvalue gap of the W is plus or one or minus. And uh, it is uh, not so difficult to imagine that uh, this project by itself is represented by the tensor network operator like this. So because the W is a product of sigma, and here we have I, basically we have the product of three, uh, sorry, six operator, tensor operators like this, and this operator have the two diagonal elements, identity and sigma. And by combining it like this, the, this just represents the distress. We obtain the this operator project. Okay. Then the next task is to uh, consider the projector on the vortex free sector. That is the product of uh, this P for all position. And what we uh, uh, found is that by the Kinyon Lee and Kaneko san and Kashima sensei is that this projector is uh, represented by the loop gas operator like this. Sorry, I don't explain the details, but the, this local tensor Q is very sparse. So for some special combination of the virtual index, we have the finite element that is the identity of Pauli matrix. And by uh, Considering the tensor contraction of this uh, infinite tensor network, basically, we obtain this project. If you are interested, please uh, uh, refer to this paper. Okay, I will skip. And uh, so now we have the tensor network representation of the projector onto the vortex free sector. Then the next we construct the state, the quantum state. The here, we consider the ferromagnetically ordered state pointing the 111 direction. And we project the, this state by using the projector to previously constructed by the tensor network. And in total, we have the D equal to X of a tensor, tensor product state, infinite tensor product state like this. And it is called the loop gas state. And maybe reason uh, here uh, shows that uh, this loop gas state can by the many uh, important property uh, appear in the static state, especially the, it is the actually the low magnetic state, and it shows the same criticality with the static state. So we can consider that this simple construction of the quantum medieval state, then loop gas state, is the simplest example of the capitalist types of naked state. Okay. Do you mean this state itself is capitalist? Ah, sorry. Is this state itself capitalist? Capitalist, yes. Okay. So if we observe, for example, correlation next, and if we increase the bond dimension of the polar transfer matrix, we can observe that. Okay, please. Uh, yeah. Want to check that the loop is the 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 Actually, we don't really have to do that because we can mathematically establish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Then the next part is uh, uh, related to the, my quantum classical entanglement algorithm. So the in the in the same paper, 
we showed that we can systematically improve our energy expectation value if we may, uh, by applying the additional operator to on top of the this loop gas. Then the this uh, operator R is named timer gas operator, if I remember correctly. Then the, this just means that the, it introduced the a timer excitation like this on the our system. And we have the parameter corresponding to the density of the, this timer excitation. And if we apply this operator to loop gas state once, then we have one variation of parameter. And because this loop gas operator has bond dimension D, uh, sorry, bond dimension two, the total on the dimension of this tensor network state is four. So corresponding to this here. Okay. Then probably you see the title. Uh, point uh, one. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the, okay. And also, if we apply that this operator twice and control the parameter, then we obtain a new variation of energy something. So the point is that only applying the two operator and using the two variation parameter, we obtain the very accurate energy. So it means that we can uh, we can obtain the very good tensor network representation of the gapless type spin liquid state by considering the I'll say low root gas state plus uh, somehow short range excitations. And this this situation is similar to the previous my proposal. So if we prepare the this loop gas state in the quantum computer, then the, this dimer gas part can be represented by the how say, additional gate. The and this is my idea. Okay, so yeah, this is just a message. So okay, so let's show you. Let me show you the result. So the, my strategy is something like that. So we. First, prepare the root gas state in the quantum computer, and we apply the additional gate so that we it mimic that this R part. And what what I want to uh, check is that uh, we try to optimize the parameter corresponding to the additional gate in the small cluster. And we I what I want to show you is that the such optimized parameter is in common in the case of the infinite size system. If it is satisfied, we can use the optimized, optimized gate in the small cluster to in, in the infinite system. Okay. And I will show you the, this example. Okay. Then the first, uh, I show, I, I'd like to show you that the, it, actually the, this loop gas state is easily implemented in the quantum the circuit. So, yeah, this is the, just a previous one. So the loop gas state is the product of the local projector. And the local projector is represented by this one. And if you are familiar with the quantum gate, you can imagine that this O operator is similar to the sum sort of the two qubit gate. Actually, the, this O operator is nothing but the controlled power gate. Okay. So we can represent that this uh, local project operator as the product of controlled power operator. And if we write the controlled power operator like this, and define currently in the different schema x, y, z, then we obtain that this kind of diagram. Basically. So here psi is just a how say quantum state. And we need the additional to be like this, that corresponds to the control gate. Unfortunately, the, in this original representation, we have trace. So it means that we need to connect the, this part and this part. So it is not the contact circuit, because in the case of the contact circuit, we have the arrow of the time direction. However, fortunately, in this case, we can, uh, by using the Adamal gate, we can open the, this trace. And we can construct uh, this kind of a setup. So 
first we apply the uh, prepare the uh, uh, local quantum state on the, this additional qubit and perform the this controlled parry gate. And finally, we measure this part. Previously, I don't realize, I didn't realize that we don't need that this measurement, but <laughs> especially in this ASG workshop, I realized that actually that this measurement is successful with probability one. Actually, we don't need that this measurement. But anyway, the by using the, this kind of setup, we can realize this how to say, uh, cancer network is good in the quantum circuit. Okay. With without measurement. Oh, lucky. Okay, so now we can represent our root gas state in the quantum circuit. Okay. So is this similar to generate uh, Frequent yeah, uh, yes, basically, yes. So this Same structure, problem. this structure is similar to the case of the toric code Y, and probably the many string does. Yes, I Okay, then the next we want to apply the additional gate to the, to the state, and the one. Natural choice is something like that. This is kind of the two qubit gate. So we consider the unitary operator applying the two neighboring qubit. And this theta is the control parameter. And the gamma is uh, x or for y or z, depending on the model. Sorry. Yeah, so, 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 from my question. So, I think when you start with the loop casting, mm -hmm. Then it's in the same topological sector as the ground state of the original Hamiltonian, the Kitai spin liquid, uh, Kitai Hanico. Is it? Ah, uh, no, exactly speaking, it's not the topological sector because this state is gasless. Okay. But uh, what I want to say is that in this model, we have the many conserved quantity, mm -hmm. and at least this uh, initial state is in the same, uh, how say, sector. So this vortex free <laughs> yes. and uh, all the fluxes are just one. Yes, yes. But then when you are applying this um, in the NIST block, mm -hmm. when you are applying this quantum circuit, mm -hmm. then uh, how I'm basically what I'm worried about is that how do you make sure that you are going towards the same topological sector as the ground state? Uh, okay. How do you control that? Yeah, it's a very good question. But here we designed that, that this unitary operator doesn't break the, uh, how to say, vortex free condition. So within this setup, uh, our quantum state is always <coughs> in the, uh, how to say, vortex free sector. <laughs> this is a special example. In the general setup, we may need to consider more sophisticated discussion to <coughs> ensure that uh, we consider two sectors. But in this specific example. Yeah. So in this case, it works because you know. Yeah. So if you apply this kind of things, uh, you commute with the current plan. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> okay. So this part is uh, not commute. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> they don't commute with the uh, Ah, okay. Otherwise. Yeah. So energy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then the, we obtain this one. If we neglect the, this imaginary I, we can find the similarity between the this operator and the loop gas operator. And this theta can be mapped to the a previous pi. So we can expect that, that this uh, strategy works well. So at least by applying the gift U, we may degrade the energy. However, what I found is that uh, even if we apply uh, this U gate to the loop gas state, we cannot decrease the energy, unfortunately. So here I show that for the simplicity, uh, we consider just a single layer, and we choose the same parameter for the every point. And, uh, and here we consider the infinite size system. Then the right panel shows the, our data for the red, pan, red dot so the case of the unitary operator, so as we discussed, and here theta is 
zero corresponds to a loop gas state. And by changing that theta, we tune the parameter of this metal gate, but always energy uh, got increase, unfortunately. In the case of the dimer gas operator, and the, we, in this case, we uh, change the meaning of the theta, but we obtain the lower energy than the loop gas. Actually, what I found is that the unitarity is very uh, important to understand this behavior. So if we introduce the imaginary coefficient in the loop gas operator so that it corresponds to somehow corresponds to this metal operator, then we cannot obtain the almost energy gain. Can you remind us what's the dimer gas operator? Dimer gas operator is like this. So yeah, basically that we apply the sigma x, sigma, sigma d, but the difference from the previous loop gas operator, we just uh, apply the single bond excitation somehow. So it can also be realized by one more layer of control. Ah, right. Uh, okay. uh, 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 Wait, so it's not unitary? Not unitary. Uh, so I, I think it is very difficult to represent that this one. Okay, so it is not a, also this is not a project. That, that, uh, <laughs> anyway, so the imaginarity is killed the host. Uh, so unitarity restricts our approach. So maybe we, if we increase the layers or the system, like we may obtain a good result. But uh, at this stage, uh, this doesn't work well. But here, what I want to show you is that. Uh, uh, similarity in the smaller system type and the infinite type system. So to show that part, here I consider the optimization outside the unitary. So here I consider the disk non-unitary gate. So we just remove the previous i, imaginary i in the our gate. So we, here this is the non-unitary. And we consider similar setup. So actually the, this is by using the so-called block encoding technique, we can realize this kind of the low intelligence in the quantum computer. Yeah, but, but any, anyway, it does, yeah, this is just like a numerical experiment. Then the left hand side shows the initial uh, infinite lattice, and the right hand side shows the small size cluster, 24 size cluster. And uh, we see the red curve. Uh, in the case of the uh, in this size system, we actually obtain the energy gain, uh, energy reduced from the initial gas state at this arm uh, here. So in this uh, non-unitary gate, we can obtain the energy gain by adding the one, the, uh, sorry, one gate. Okay. You can say the energy gain is the low energy. The low energy, okay. I see that except for only data points, green lines, more than okay, so yeah, red line is the dimer gas operator. That is the previous uh, I don't think I'm kind of right, but dimer gas is the <laughs> ah, yes, so dimer gas is the up. Sorry, and uh, yeah, what, what I'm saying is that here I compared with the this point, theta equals zero, and here. So compared with the initial state, this is the loop gas state. We obtain the this here. So actually, we have the two point here and here. And we did, at, and also here, here, this four point, the energy is less than the original loop gas state. So we shouldn't be looking at the red versus green, but the, the, po the points. Yeah. Uh, yes, we, yeah, we just mm -hmm. compare the this theta equals zero and the other part. But I guess the diver gas still gives you a lower energy. All right, yeah, this is because the diver gas state is the superposition of the possible diver gas configuration and diver configuration. But here we just apply the one of the okay. same locally. Just one layer of the. Yeah, here, here, here in this example. Anyway, how about the 
here I just apply the previous setup. So we choose the same parameter for all what it means that we keep the rotation. Okay. So you this is not unitary case. No, it's, yeah, yeah. You, like, you don't do like uh, because you, you can represent a non unitary case on and as a, as a unitary case and put it on the circuit. So you don't do that? Yeah, uh, here just a uh, crash for simulation. Oh, okay. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 crash for tensor approximation because we can represent this as a tensor. Okay, sorry. So here I don't use, I didn't use the real code. And the point is the left-hand side. So in the small side cluster, we also obtain the energy, uh, energy gain like this. So the initial energy is relatively high compared with the infinite size system. But by applying the gate, we obtain the energy gain like this. And the point is, what I want to emphasize is that the position of the minimum is almost in common in this setup. So it shows that if we simulate the, our system in the small cluster, and we if we optimize the, our parameter theta, then we can use this optimized parameter theta for the infinite size system. At least in this special data. So in, in all your gates, you are using the same theta. Yes, yes, in this data. If I use different theta, will you get better? I think so. But unfortunately, in the case of the unitary gate. I tried that many <laughs> combination of the different theta or many years, then the battery, we cannot obtain the energy gain. But in, in this case, we may obtain the better energy if we change the, I'll say, theta for each one, or we consider the years, but I didn't check. But <laughs> for the this should not be great. But in the, yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe. So the more natural ways just to increase the number of Did you understand what these two things are? Uh, so far, I don't know. But the, yeah, this <laughs> calculation contains the many, very important information. Actually, the loop gas state is not a good grounds, a good state for the small size cluster. So the, this is very high compared with the original uh, two ground state energy. And so the, probably that we need to add the many, how to say, we need to consider, how to say, uh, it's very difficult to explain, but uh, yeah, it is slightly complicated compared with the infinite time system. So uh, due to the final segment, uh, we may need to consider the many excitation or something like that. And it may affect the, this origin, the, this kind of things. Yeah. 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 The final segment is the scheme that has the different degeneracy in infinite layer. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. In the case of the, this 24 side cluster, we. 34. Yeah, yeah, probably, yes. So, the, so we, in, in the case of the 24 side cluster, the vortex three condition is probably the ground state, but we may need to consider additional observable quantity coming from the torus structure or something like that. And so, yeah, it may affect. How to control the. Okay. Kind of so, in this specific example, we can always cost closing uh, our quantum sector by using the project uh, constructed by the tensor network. And uh, what we know the exact sector, we can control that. that in, in this sector. <laughs> okay. I, I, so, it is a subject of consecutive operation. Only one or how many? Oh, okay, here I just apply the same layer, but so you are, in, principle, yeah. in principle, we can add the many layers to test the uh, to Yes, test. Ah, uh, no, you so I didn't the check. I didn't. and different operations. Yeah, for it's possible. 
we are we we may obtain a lower energy, but so far I didn't check check the such uh, experiment. Okay. This is a basic question. Can both scale can be uh, implemented in other computing? Uh, so this case is easy, easier, and in this non-unitary gate, actually we can design the like, unitary gates. Uh, this non-unitary gate as a part of the unitary huge, mm -hmm. a larger unitary gate. And by using the for example measurement or something like that, we can realize that this so, uh, the computer. But I I don't want to say that we we should use the, this one. But the purpose of this slide is just. In, if in this setup, we can show that uh, optim optimize the parameter is in common in the small size cluster and the size cluster. Right. I mean, if you really want to use common computing, mm -hmm. you need to design, you need to decide which kind of gate you want to have. Ah, yes. I, I agree mm -hmm. that if we have many gates, then we obtain the energy gate. But uh, because I just performed this calibration in the first set, visual tensor network calibration. So it is not a different, it is different from the state vector and also that this is the inference system. So I didn't perform that many layers in this calculation. But for the finite size system, we can use, for example, the state vector situation or something like that. And in that case, we can check the many layers. Uh, sorry, so, but here in, in your calculation so far, you gave them in one parameter. Right, right. <laughs> A generalized form of the suitable case is more parameters can even better. Uh, yes, but, but in, in this Kitai model, we need to conserve the vortex with condition. And so SU2 or SU4 gate is not big. So, uh -huh. so we want to conserve the uh, vortex with condition. <laughs> that are uh, some uh, upstate. Uh, okay. Okay. It might be really stupid, but can we just apply imaginary time evolution of the Hamiltonian? I mean, then we <laughs> always go on, like adding the ranches together. Uh, it, yes, it, it is possible. Yes. But uh, the point, may, maybe the point is that, what, yeah, finally, the, our goal is I want, I, I, I want to. Uh, import these gates into the cluster computer side. Mm -hmm. And in that case, uh, maybe not so easy to obtain the good tensor network representation. Anyway, this is just a one example where the, my approach may be successful. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Then let me start my talk. So, yeah, today I propose an uh, approach to investigate a complicated quantum spin model by mystical computer and they did quantum cluster and algorithm approach. And I showed it that, by in, at least in the case of the capitalist steps, we could say this approach somehow works well, hopefully. Then the, I believe that the, we can. Continue this approach to investigate a more complicated system so that we can outperform the allocation solely by the classical computer. So, by combining the NISC and the classical computer, we may calculate a more, I would say, complicated or more difficult system in the near future. That is for your opinion. So when you apply this non-invention, then what happens uh, like it, it is also affecting the orthogonality or orthogonality of the start with because generally uh, like non hamilton systems have uh, by orthogonality non by orthogonality. So left and right becomes uh, so you mean, uh, this is, this is yeah. you know, so this is not uh, unitary, but it is function. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so my question is, this is not unitary, so is it also affecting yeah. the orthogonality of the change? 
Oath normality mean that uh, normalization. normalization. Yeah, normalization. Uh, normalization is not so important because we only go to the same thing. Okay. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to thank you for the very nice talks, and I finally understand like how do you construct it. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's already a very very interesting result. I will maybe want to discuss with you later on that you can create a gapless state with a sequential circuit. Uh -huh. This is not. This is something that people haven't explored quite uh, much yet. Because we know that by sequential quantum circuit, we can connect a gapped phase. Mm -hmm. We can create an, an almost all gapped phase with a sequential circuit. Mm -hmm. But for creating gapless states, this is less explored. Oh. So uh, I think even by the original part of this, <laughs> this is already a very nice model. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I want to go back to my previous question. What I want to ask. Is not about the infinite translation index. I know that's by definition, and that you can carefully translate by performing several corners of the nature. So what I want to understand is if I believe the more power simply but how do I actually do that on the finite master in general? That is the answer is the answer to power simply and find out actually. Uh, okay, so in in the real problems, we cannot know that within the, this uh, approach, we cannot know that uh, so we cannot know that the uh, optimized actually is the true optimized parameter for the infinite type system. But at this setup, uh, at the last stage, we can actually calculate the energy. And we can know that uh, at least we um, we can we could obtain the energy gain from the original one. one. And something like that we can check that uh, at least we improved our how's the variation of the function by using this thing. And uh, yeah, for example, yeah, I, I just imagine that we use this technique to draw the field diagram. So we want to prepare the energy for different techniques, and in that purpose, I can use. Maybe he's suggesting the possibility that uh, I mean, the original state it is guaranteed mathematically that the original state yeah. is a gapless. I mean, okay. I mean, the correlation decays apart, I mean, algebraically. Okay. But uh, then you apply something else. Then uh, this result, maybe this result is lower in the energy, but uh, maybe this, re <laughs> this is new state uh, is uh, has a long but finite correlation. Is that yeah. possible? Maybe it's possible. But in that case, I believe that if we import this parameter to the infinite size system, finally we obtain the larger energy that we want because it is uh, different from the two signal or two ground state. So right. first we are, uh, assume that uh, we obtain the uh, qualitatively good tensor network state. So if it is gapless, the final result we expect is gapless. I guess uh, I guess you can always check, right? Because you know, you, you can get back a uh, tensor network, mm -hmm. even if you're optimizing the yeah, yeah. So you can always check the yeah, yeah. uh, do the transfer basics calculation yeah. yeah. classical to see if you have it. Because this I now I understand you you're a multi to get an answer. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, now I get to so, I think it's an even better method probably. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can really do a conversion uh, uh, evolution mm -hmm. using unitary gates. So maybe you just do a unit the immersion the evolution using Hamiltonian or the part of Hamiltonian. And oh. so then you need both dimensions. Right? Yeah. Ah, right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I guess the, the, the thing here is that you assume that you get a state vector in, in this case, but in your real computer, you, you have to measure the collect the statistics, right? Uh, to optimize the G parameter, we need the measurement. Yes. But this quantum state representation itself doesn't contain the measurement. So if we realize that this quantum state by the margin time regulation, basically we need the measurement. It, because it is not. Yeah. 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 Y
Oh, okay. Look, okay, no, it's unitary because you can uh, represent this uh, dimensional evolution part as a unitary, but you have to do some. There's some answers you can do that. Well, by that, you would buy post selection. Post selection. Can you unitary gate that you can you take their imaginary time like emission variation? Yes. Yeah. 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 Seems not. So uh, then let us thank Professor Okubo for this excellent presentation.